All right, guys. I've got a confession to make. I may not be around too much longer. Stay tuned. You see, I may or may not have bought another Grand Marquis. And I may or may not have told my wife I was going to do so. So by the time this video comes out, she will have found out. But, if you see a follow-up to this video, then you'll know she took it very well. And I could justify it because, you know, it truly is the number one source of views on this channel right here is Panther Platform content, Grand Marquis. I don't have any Crown Vicks or uh, Town Cars, but those videos that I post on Grandma, my 2004 Grand Marquis, are the ones that you guys watch the most and they seem to get the most attention. And if I'm looking to grow a YouTube channel, well, I've got to create content that grows. So, a fellow viewer and a customer here locally reached out to me, Mike, in a private message on Facebook Messenger with a link to this car for sale. It piqued my interest because it was a 2003 Grand Marquis, so it's only a year older than mine, but it's got almost 300,000 kilometers and the price was only 1600 bucks was the asking price. And it said make an offer. So I reached out to him and asked him if he would mind bringing it out to the shop here so I can get it up on the hoist and I'm gonna bring you guys along. So he should be here shortly and we'll take a look at this Grand Marquis. Hopefully it becomes my winter beater, seeing how my wife does not want to give grandma up anymore. Uh, she's, she truly has fallen in love. She could have any one of these cars on the lot to drive as a regular driver. Uh, you know, 2015 Malibu, uh, 2016 uh, Dodge Journey. She could have anything out there, 2018 Elantra, whatever she wanted. But folks, she chooses to want to drive grandma. And well, can you blame her? Anyways, Buddy should be here very shortly with the 2003, and then we'll get a really good look at it and uh, see if we can make this happen. So, fingers crossed. So there's been a slight change in plans. He couldn't make it out on his lunch break, so he was gonna come out after work. Well, as luck would have it, he went home after work to try and start the car, and for some reason, wouldn't start. So I told him I could go to him. Uh, it's closing time anyway, so we're gonna head over to his place. Hopefully he'll let me uh, bring the camera along, if not, and if we can get it started, I'll be sure to uh, bring you guys along. So. We'll uh, head in there and uh, see if we can get some uh, footage of this uh, 2003 Grand Marquis. And there she is, boys. Let's get out and take a look. So this is the car here, guys, and it's got a little bit of a rough paint job on it. Somebody has painted it before, but it's already got the Mustang wheels on the car. And uh, like I said, he was gonna bring it out to me, told me it wouldn't start, but by the looks of things, from what I can tell it possibly, just upon uh, initial look, it might just be a battery thing. It seems like it's just got no juice. And, and the batteries brought it in January. Yeah. So you've got a, he's got a charger on it here. While we're waiting for that to give a little bit of a charge, maybe we will uh, just kind of look around the car here. And nothing looks any different than mine. Mine's an 04, so they were basically the same car. Uh, not too much different. Um, this one's got a pile of miles on it though, doesn't it? It's 300 and... 340? Yeah. Because at one point, I think, almost when I bought this car, it looked like one of those unmarked highway cruisers. Okay. Because it was a matte black. 
So it's got a fairly recent inspection sticker just done this month, which is good for two years. And the interior is very reminiscent of mine. Mine doesn't have the wooden steering wheel. It doesn't have the adjustable pedals. And this one's got the digital gauge too. It doesn't have the uh, radio either. No. <laughs> Actually, I've got a big screen radio in mine too. So it, yeah. And this has got uh, climate control and cruise control, volume controls on the steering wheel. A little bit fancier than mine. Yeah, but basically the same. You get an aluminum drive shaft, that's a bonus. Armrest. Looks like a sub in the back. And this car, I guess by the looks of this, used to be the same golden ash as what grandma is. Winter tires and everything. The oh, okay. The mechanic said that somebody had uh, welded the manifold shut. <laughs> so, the check engine light's That's probably on. why the check engine light's on. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. I had an OBD reader that uh, told me that. That's the thing with the dash. Is it's a it's pretty pretty much an Android tablet. Yeah. So I downloaded the Torque app. I popped an OBD reader on it, and it'll show you RPMs and everything if you want. Really. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about some of these cars is they didn't have uh, they didn't have tax on them, and you just had to rely on uh, on what you felt was right. And uh, I just did a rear end swap in mine. I put the uh, the locking differential in it. Okay. So both rear tires spin instead of just the one. So it'd be interesting to see if this has got that or not. I do see it's got dual smokers coming out the back here. Yeah. So it's got the dual exhaust, and if we can get her started up, we'll uh, we'll see what she sounds like. Paint's peeling, so whoever painted it, I, I would say probably just just sprayed it. Yeah, did a poor job. Yeah, <laughs> which is uh, not the end of the world because I know how to paint. The problem is, is it's a big job to do so. <clears throat> oh, the, the yeah, the, <laughs> exactly. The, the paint's not too bad itself. It's uh, it's been sitting out in the sun for a while. Uh, when they've sprayed it flat black. Uh, the sun has baked it basically down to a white, whitish gray again. Yeah, like a camo. Yeah. The car itself doesn't look like it's in that bad a shape, other than the paint not sticking. Yeah. So I figure we're going to try and boost this with some jumper cables. We got it hooked up to the truck. So let's see if we've got any juice here now. Oh, oh yeah, there's a key on the seat too, yeah. Nothing. I hear it crackling. I wonder if it's just a starter or just might have give up the ghost. Yeah. yeah, she's got nothing there at all. And the starter on these things. Yeah, it's a hard spot to get out. I do see it, I guess. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, there we go, guys. We are the proud owners of a 2003 Grand Marquis. And it's at this point where I've got to get home and tell my wife that I bought A, another Grand Marquis that doesn't run. <laughs> but that's not the only problem is uh, I think she'll be all right with it because she loves hers and now I'll have one that I can enjoy. And this one here looks like we may end up having to paint it, but that's all part of the process. And uh, did we get it started? No, we did not get it started. Uh, do I know what's wrong with it? No idea. So in a case like that, I took an awful chance, not an awful chance, it's only money, but I took a chance and I road killed him. I took his asking price, cut it right in half, made him an offer, he countered, I countered back, we bought the car guys for 900 bucks. Uh, I don't think we can go too far wrong on 900 bucks for this car. Tomorrow, we'll grab the trailer, we'll come out, we'll get it, take it back to the shop and see if we can't figure out what's going on with it there. A couple things that are running through my mind on what could be wrong, simply it could be the starter, but again, we kind of got to get it up in the air to figure that one out. It also could be that inertia switch in the trunk. Uh, I did kind of check it. It looked like it was, you know, depressed the way it should be. It could be a neutral safety switch. Maybe the gear shifter is not uh, fully in park. I didn't even think to check that now that I've uh, left. But no matter. We've got the car bought. It uh, it's, it's still at, the, at that guy's house. And... We've got to go get it, but nevertheless, we're going to uh, try to uh, get her back to the shop. We'll figure out what's going on, so uh, we'll do that. So we're back here at the 03 Grand Marquis. I've got the truck and trailer, and uh, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try jumping the starter and see if that does anything. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything at all, but we're going to try it. Oh, look, he's already got a colder intake on it. Might want to replace the filter there. All right, so go turn the key onto the on position. No. The starter's not engaging. Now the starter's engaging, but the part on the starter that pushes it out oh. isn't doing anything. No, Bendix. So it's looking like the uh, starter itself. So I guess we're stuck pushing this thing out onto the road and uh, getting her loaded up onto the trailer. So I guess that's what we're doing. So what we're up against right now is we've got a wench on this trailer that is a dud. It's uh, slipping, it doesn't have enough power to pull the car up onto the trailer. So seeing how we got the car partially up on the ramps, I'm going to see if I can get underneath of it. We've got the wheels blocked. I'm going to beat on that starter. Hopefully we can get this thing started. Okay. she don't want to do nothing so I guess what we're gonna to have to do is uh, let it sit here on the side of the road and call a tow truck so at this point I think we're defeated uh, it's just junior and I here there's no way we're gonna push this 4,000 pound car or whatever it weighs uh, up onto the trailer so I think we're left with our only option is to call a tow truck so we'll do that and uh, get it back to the shop. So there she is, and we will meet it out to the garage. All right, we've got this old POS back here at the shop. We still don't know what's wrong with it. We haven't had a whole lot of time to uh, look at it, but the battery's completely dead as it sits now from us with the, uh, you know, trying to get it started and 
doors open and this and that. Uh, we're going to put it on the charge overnight and then tomorrow we'll come and see if we can't figure out uh, what's going on. I think it's the starter. We can cross it over and everything turns but the Bendix is not engaging. So I think that's what the problem is. Uh, at least I'm hoping because you can buy a reman starter for these things for you know 125 bucks or something like that. So it's not a big deal. Uh, then we're going to attack getting this thing cleaned up inside and out. And one thing that I did as a little bit of a test was I started with some Scotch-Brite, just some uh, red Scotch-Brite, and I just started kind of sanding very lightly on this oxidized flat black paint, and it actually came out not that bad. There's a few spots where the paint is peeling, which I may touch up, but you can see back here where I did this whole quarter panel, you know, the top here and then down here is it actually didn't turn out too bad. I'm not sure the direction I want to go with this vehicle yet. We're going to check it over mechanically. We're going to actually make sure we can get it started. And then we're going to figure out what the direction is on this. Already I can tell you guys right now, you either like it or you don't, this car is getting lifted. You all told me in one of my last videos you didn't want to see that happen to old grandma, but guess what? This isn't grandma. This is a new vehicle. Uh, it's a high miler, 220,000 miles, I think what it works out to. And we're going to need a name for it, and I need your guys' help. So if you think of something that's neat, yes, we've got grandma, I don't want it to be grandpa. Uh, it's got to be something quick, catchy, rolls off the tongue. Put your suggestions down in the uh, comment section. We'll figure out what we're going to call this car. And if we can get it running, well, We'll have some fun with it. If we can't, well, maybe it might be the next candidate for Tannerite, but no, I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. It does have a fresh inspection sticker. I can't imagine there being too much wrong with it, uh, but nevertheless, we're gonna get it fixed up. We're gonna get it running and uh, you know, we'll go over it. We'll do a little bit of a review on it once I've got a few miles on it. That's gonna do it for this episode. Um, I think it's a great purchase. Like I said, we got 900 bucks tied up into it plus a $60 tow truck. Uh, bill to the shop here uh, So 960 bucks and I have to prove to my wife that YouTube will help me pay for it So you guys need to be watching these videos uh, It really helps if you're watching the ads and at the very least if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet Please go down here click that red subscribe button turn it gray and hit the bell notification so that you can uh, Get notified every time I go live. We're on a goal for 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year we're pretty close. We're at 45, 50 something right now as we speak. And I think that we're gonna be able to get there, but I need your guys' help because after 5,000, the next goal is 10K. So tell your friends, tell your Panther friends, tell anybody who will listen about old car guy. We're gonna have some fun with this car. Um, we're actually gonna probably abuse it uh, a little bit, more so than we ever would have with grandma because grandma is just simply too nice of a car. Uh, to abuse and destroy or whatever. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through this car, get the options, we'll figure it out. That's in another video. Having said all that, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate every single one of you who have subscribed. If you're a new subscriber, thank you. And as you guys know, I end every video with stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. Love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.